I grew up on a dairy farm in Decatur, Texas. You milk cows twice a day, rain, shine, snow, sleet. It was just a 24-7 type job. I had never seen a cow. I grew up in a big, messy Irish family in San Francisco, and it was as far from Texas as is imaginable. And yet, we managed to be able to completely trust one another. That's the glue. I would describe Bill Carter as a pioneer in this industry that truly cares. 1973 and 74 were the first back-to-back -back down years in the market, and that put a lot of stress on all kinds of financial firms. There was no other place to go because everybody was gone. And so I had to go start my own business. And I didn't have reception furniture. It didn't make a lot of difference. There's not gonna be two clients there at the same time anyway. We were hair on fire all the time. The building the business was slow. Nobody had ever heard the term financial plan er or financial plan in. At that point in time, uh, uh, financial planning was less than 10 years old, or roughly 10 years old, and that was very much an in infancy stage. No one knew or understood what we were doing, but we were alight. We were on fire with the message of this whole new way of coming at our business. I said, all we have to do is just take care of our clients, and if we take care of our clients, they'll take care of us. And of course, I was just lucky, I mean, just plain lucky to find Kathy whose value system share it was the same as mine. Now, if you talk to Kathy, politics, we're about as opposite as daylight and dark. While there are times when that creates conflict, which you would expect because there are differences, it also enriches each of us, and I think we end up with better decisions for the differences. Especially in that period in the late 80s, early 90s, which you may remember, we lost nine of the 10 largest banks in Texas. It was a learning process for me to see someone who was that dedicated to a, a profession that hardly anyone knew. Clients were frightened. Frankly, we were frightened. And uh, it was a time of hunkering down and making sure that our budgets were intact and that our clients were as well taken care of as we could possibly think of doing, knowing that we would wait it out. Financial planning is not a set it and forget it kind of activity. It's something that you have to revisit all the time. And, and I think Kathy and I and Bob and, and everybody at this firm has done a pretty good job through the years of educating our clients to that. We have not had clients sell out in bad times. And we have had a lot of clients add to their portfolios during those bad times. You, you couldn't be what he is unless you had uh, a focus on other, other people's needs the way you you picture the, the spotlight being on others, not yourself. Financial planning is an in interesting industry as most people want to help each other out. And I think that comes from early in the days when Bill Carter and the people he ran with decided that that's the way this, this industry should be. If, if people that own the companies could give something back to their community, they could make the community better. You make the community better, you make your state better and the country better. It's just a logical progression. And my goodness, we've worked at shelters, we, we painted buildings, which I don't know why anybody would want us to paint anything. We're terrible. Painting everywhere. We painted a Catholic school one time. We painted a nurses association one time. We've done all kinds of things. And it's wildly enriching for each of us individually and for us as a firm. And I didn't want them to lose that compassion to that part of our society because you don't see it coming through our offices. In the end, for me, it's very satisfying. I kind of sit back like a proud papa as I watch these people working. And they work hard. I mean, they sweat. I mean, they really get into what they're doing. And that means a lot to me, you know, as to why I even started it, why I put up with some of this crap I have to put up with in uh, running a company. I had learned that, that for work not to be work, it had to be leisure. So we do, a, we take, we have a farm picnic. I take them up to the ranch in Decatur. These are all city people for the most part. I like getting them out of the city, getting them into the country. It's completely foreign, it's lovely. And for those who are, who are from small towns, it's a return to their roots. I, I'm very proud of having raised a lot of very talented young people here over the years. Uh, once upon a time, we were those young people. And I think long term, that's what will carry this farm forward, because at some point in time, I'm not gonna be here, neither will Kathy, neither will Bob. The world is changing, um, technology is taking us in new directions, but the basic um, needs of our clients will remain the same. I expect that the next 40, 50, or 60, or however many more years that there are to come, we won't continue to be a firm if we don't continue to serve those clients in the fashion that we have for these last 40 years. There is nothing more satisfying 
than being on this journey with a client family. And when you are present for the weddings and the births, and the divorces and the deaths, and the graduations, and the next round of weddings, it is a remarkably complete experience. It's been a lot of hard work, and there, there were, especially during a couple of different periods when the economy and the markets were so bad, there were a lot of sleepless nights. You gotta hand it to him. He, uh, he did something that few people uh, have ever done. There's two things I have in Dallas. One, I've got the best competitors. You know, I have truly the best competitors in the country right here in the city, and they're all good friends of mine. Uh, the other thing, and probably more important than that, is our client base. We have the best clients in the country. They're the most educated clients. They're smart to begin with. They're successful to begin with, but they're very educated. They read, they study, they come to our meetings, they come to our seminars, and they make good decisions because they work at it. Uh, and, they have, and they have been so loyal to us for 40 years. That is something you can't buy. They're loyal, they're fun to work with, they're good people. You know, this is something that can only be judged after I leave this earth. When I started out, I wanted to be relevant. I wanted to make a difference uh, in, in my community, uh, a little bit of difference at A&M and a difference in the profession. And I don't know if I have or not, but that's what I wanted to do. And I hope that at some point in time that other people will look back and think that I did have a positive influence on those areas that were part of my original objectives when I started out in the early 1970s. I just don't know how I could have lived a more fulfilled life than I've lived at this point. I really don't know how I could have. So it's been it's been very meaningful to me, and I'm uh, you know, and I'm glad we're I'm, I'm glad we're going to be able to celebrate with our clients and our and, and our friends, and say thank you to all the people that have helped make it wonderful. <laughs>